guys, welcome back to the GSTL. Today we have Slayers versus Prime.we. I am Wolf, and with me today is Doa. How are you feeling, Doa? I am feeling absolutely amazing, Wolf. I am so happy to be back in Korea casting the GSL. You and I, ca you and I casted the Kodai qualifiers for the last two days. It was a ton of fun. Saw a lot of great games, but it's good to be back in the studio, I guess. Yeah, say. it absolutely yeah. is. Now, yep. coming up here, we've got Slayers. Of course, yeah. Slayer's Eve, the first female StarCraft II pro gamer to play in the GSTL. And uh, Sela actually almost qualifying for yep. Code A. Ended up playing Don Ray Gu in the finals for his group. That was pretty insane. Yeah, um, Slayer's Boxer qualified. He's yeah. standing right next to him, man. Yeah, game two. I mean, once we get the VODs up for the Code A qualifiers, guys, watch Boxer's final match he had to play before he gets in. The game two on Metalopolis is one of the craziest TVTs I've ever seen. Yeah, it was a really, really intense game. Yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about Slayers. I mean, they were such a dominant force in the team league, but they haven't won a match yet this season. Yeah, they've been doing a little bit more. It's been a, uh, they've been having a rough time, let's just yeah. say, this season. But of course, this season, the format is different, so it's OK for them to have lost a few games. Yeah. They really need to win all of the rest of their games, essentially, to be able to make it to the, uh, to the playoffs. So it's a really important match for them. Yeah, this is a huge one. I mean, it, I, I might be wrong, so correct me if I am, but I think if they lose this one, they're kind of out of luck this It's season, gonna be I very think. difficult. It is still possible to, for them to make it if they lose today, but it's okay. gonna be extremely difficult. So here's Slayer's Eve signing the flag, the Slayer's flag, giving that to a, a fan. Those flags are so awesome. I was yeah. so happy when I saw they started doing that. I'm gonna have to come to the audience and like try to sit in the front row and collect all the flags. No, you have to sit in the cast <laughs> and me and cast with me. That is a happy, cheerful next to that guy. The little happy face covering the face of the person there. That's pretty funny. Whoa, look at that dude on Slayers. That hair is pretty amazing. Uh, I like to say. Kind looks talking like about Alicia's hair. Kind looks like Ace Attorney. Yeah, I would say so. Yep. But here's Slayers right now. Established January 13th, 2011. They should have like a college style shirt that has all the teams and then when they were established, you know. We'll work on that. MMA, of course. The closer. He's won a lot of good matches for them. And uh, Ryung. Trying to frame up a nice picture of us there. <laughs> yeah, so they won two team leagues. This season haven't been doing too well. Are they going to be able to bring it back today? Well, I Find think, out. personally, I think that they they may be able to do it. I think that Slayers is probably the favorite to win this one. Prime is a very well-established team. They've been around a lot longer than Slayers, but I think Slayers might have the edge here. Yeah. Now, this graph right here, this is kind of encompassing all the team leagues so far, right? Yeah. Not just the season. Well, no, actually, it's yeah. just the season. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's all oh, okay. GSL. Okay, there it is. Thank you, Jay. They have beaten <laughs> OGS a couple times. As you can see, they've uh, beaten MVP as well. I mean, that last oh, finals. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they changed, I think they changed the way the graph is oh, okay. right now. Yeah, this is definitely all of them now. I see. Yep, there it is. Oh, I love the Boxer Box. Siege Tank edition there. That's right. That Siege Tank, I think, can pretty much cover the entire Slayers team right there. It's got a pretty large range. Yep. So some of these guys we haven't seen play yet in the team yeah, league. Slayer Sleep, for example, used to be on IM. Yeah. He's over there on the left side of the roster. And you and I were talking about Slayer's Kuma earlier today. I actually don't remember ever seeing that name before. Yeah. So I'm interested to see if we get to see him today. I don't recognize his name either, so I, I'm kind of curious to see if he use a different ID. Maybe someone could tweet at Epic So Wolf or Doa SC yeah. about that and find out who that really is. Yep. Here comes the opponent. I love this intro song they chose. <laughs> it's like the 80s are back again. It's my life, man. Bon Jovi. Although this wasn't an 80s song, but you know what I mean. It's an 80s artist. Anyway, here's the Prime team. Check, and, of course, uh, the captain there sitting next to Gerard in the center. Yeah. Hong is listening to some tunes. That's You're right. not listening to Bon Jovi right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he is. Who knows? <laughs> and they're wearing pants that are very appropriate for the amount of rain we've had lately in yes. Seoul. Yep. But Prime has never won a match in any team league ever. So if there was ever an opponent that Slayers would want to face in a very important team league match, it would be Prime. And um, it's a little bit surprising to me because Prime does have a good amount of players. Yes, they do. Yeah. There's formerly Polt Prime, now Optimus signing. That's right. A cheerful for a fan. Not to the cheerful, it's the flag. It's not just a cheerful, it's the flag. <laughs> That's right. Yep. She likes Tweety and Sylvester. Who doesn't like Tweety and Sylvester, <laughs> man? All the Bugs Bunny characters. Big fans of the GSL, of course. Hannibal sneaks in a Coca-Cola. Oh, no. <laughs> How did he get that in here? How did he get that in here? The gob police, like, drop from the ceiling on ropes and, like, <laughs> grab them and take them away. So, 
Here's a Prime Clan. They've got a cool logo. I've always liked the Prime Clan. Yeah, team. I really like it as well. Yeah. Optimus. Well, yeah, Optimus the Closer. Yeah. Not it's it's kind of funny because a lot of people thought Holt wasn't very good for a time, but I've actually always That's thought changed. he was really good. He just hasn't shown all of his potential yet. And remember, guys, when you watch people play in the GSL, that doesn't mean that oh well, if they lose all their games in GSL and they look really bad only in GSL, it doesn't actually really show you how good that player is. If they yeah. do that a year from now, if it's like that, it's like well, he's not very good. But right. we've only had the GSL for about six months or so. It's actually getting a little bit more than that now. Yeah, it's, it's like, like almost a year now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, getting close. I think it's was getting it, close to a year. Yeah. Was October the first? It's like August right now. I'm thinking it's still June. <laughs> I've been here for a little bit longer than. Well, I thought, man. Their uh, their graph looks very nice and symmetrical, but uh, yeah. it's not good news for the Prime Clan at all. They haven't won a game ever. It's true. They have a good variety of races. That's yeah. one of the most well distributed race graphs I've seen. A lot of symmetry players. on that screen right there. Yep. Yep. They look clean and nice. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. So. They also have uh, two of the youngest players in the GSL. They have both Creator Prime and Maru Prime. Now, uh, Maru, I don't think we're going to see him in the, in the uh, team league, but we are going to see him in Code A yeah. next week. Maru, I think, is more yeah. of a member of the clan. Not really. A, he doesn't live in the team house or anything like that, but he's a very young player. Creator, however, is much more ingrained with the team. He's very yeah. young, I think, being 15 years old. I've always kind of liked watching Creator play. I, I thought he's uh, he's kind of impressive. He is really impressive. He almost took a game or took a set off of uh, MVP yeah. in the Super Tournament, and he's always shown good play. But he was actually knocked out by the best in yeah. the Code Eight qualifiers. So I think we could see him today. Um, our first match is going to be a TVT. And uh, TVT is one of those matchups that I really like. I, I love casting it. I'm not such a big fan of playing it myself, not yet. <laughs> but uh, I think we've got a, a pretty exciting one. Can we tell them who's playing yet? Yeah, I think we can. Think it's going to be Marine King versus Teja first yeah. up. So it's going to be an interesting TVT. Teja's style is very normal, I guess you could say. Like he, He's got a lot of different styles. He's not like mm -hmm. Marine King, who really likes to use bio. What I'm kind of curious to see is, I haven't seen Marine King play TBT in a while. Has he switched hmm. styles? Is he going to do the new mech style? Well, I think we might see that because Marine King, you know, he had his very own distinctive style early on in the GSL. And then there was kind of a lull where I always describe it as redoing his golf swing, you know? He realized, hey, this isn't a good long-term way to play for my career in StarCraft 2. So he took some time to kind of learn a new way to play, and it's done really well for him. But here's our standings. Obviously, TSL up on top. They've done amazing. Yeah, this they have season. done extremely yeah. well. I don't think anyone really expects them to do quite that well. Talk about conquering adversity. They've had a lot of struggles in the last couple months, but shown to be a really great team. OGS TL doing really well as well. Yeah. Um, and Slayers and Prime kind of surprisingly just not doing as well as the others. Yep. I remember F United is going to be playing starting next week. They're yeah. Be playing every Friday, I believe, or every Thursday actually is going to be the case. There's so, Selen Gerard yep. there, and our ref, our SC2Con manager. Yep, basically, uh, that's right. Leader of a players association here out in Korea, also kind of like a referee for all golf events. Right, kind of explains the rules and things like that. Check and uh, out that Twitter, twitter.com/gomtv. Yeah. Go to m.gomtv.net on your mobile phone. You can actually watch this stream live if you have the premium service from your iPhone or iPad. I definitely recommend doing that. That's what I'd yeah. be doing right now on my iPhone if I weren't here and I didn't have a computer to use. You'd be doing it right now anyway. We could have it right there. We could have like a third preview monitor. I'll get my iPhone out right now. Wouldn't do very good. Table. But yeah, definitely follow us on Twitter. Follow Wolf at X FXO Wolf. <laughs> follow me at, at Doa SC, D O A S C. So why not? We tweet a lot. We tweet a lot. Yeah. And I'm actually going to start tweeting more about these events and trying to keep you guys as updated as I can. It's something I haven't really done yet. I don't know, he's like tweeting about Star Fox. You guys are like, stop talking about Star Fox. Well, Star Fox is cool too, but <laughs> I had a really hard time like talking about it yesterday because every time I wanted to say Star Fox, I said StarCraft because I've been saying StarCraft yeah, I did the nonstop same, yeah. for like a year now. And uh, so that was really difficult. I just but. try to say, if you try to say Star Fox 64, which is the game I've been mainly focusing on, mm -hmm. then it gets, it's really easy. It's a little bit easier. But see, there was a StarCraft 64, too, That's so that didn't help true. me at all. all right, because, well, forget yeah. about that game. Don't ever play that <laughs> game. Guys, if you've never played StarCraft 64, yeah. it's basically a port of the PC version. There's some cool extra missions in it and stuff that you don't get on the PC version. It's but if you're good at StarCraft on the PC, if you try to use that control stick, it's, it's, just, not, it's just not meant for yeah. Nintendo 64. <laughs> they, did, they did about as good of a job as they could with it, really. But it's on a Nintendo 64 controller, you know, I mean, it's kind of like the Nintendo 64, you could 
controller you can put on the end of a stick and have like a nice trident, but it's not a very good controller. I don't even remember if you can drag. Can you drag? In that game, I think you actually have to manually select it's every single thing that you do, It's been a long time since I've played man. that on Nintendo 64, I don't even know man. how to hotkey stuff. Like, what do you, hot yeah. you hotkey to, like, the C buttons or something? I don't know, man. I don't know. You need, like, a separate controller for the hotkeys. You're, like, <laughs> holding one, you hit another one for the hotkeys. I actually kind of want to go back and play it now. We're going to bring like, it back. It's probably a terrible idea, but I kind of want to play it again. GSL, next season, StarCraft 64 tournament. I, I think Star Fox 64 is much more like 64 that. players, 64 bits. <laughs> Next season on the GSL. <laughs> There's our first Slayers player, as we mentioned earlier. Slayers Teja, five wins, two losses, which is pretty good in the GSL. I mean, to have a 70% win ratio for your games, that's pretty amazing. I think he actually all killed Zen X last season. I yeah, that's right. So yep. that's pretty impressive. He actually used to, it's kind of ironic given that he used to be at right, next. Right, right. And um, that was the big thing with that match because he had just left the next and then they started him against him the next week. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, after that, a lot of next players are very upset thinking that it was possible he had given out information. And there was like a whole bunch of drama over here in Korea that didn't really, like it wasn't really a big deal outside in the foreign scene, but no, I didn't Deja, a really, really good player and you know, Next really respects him despite like the scandal that happened, but nothing really actually happened, but there was a big scandal behind that. Right. Um, so he's a very strong player in general, but his opponent is someone that everyone knows. Marine King recently actually falling to code A. Yeah. Look at those results. Runner up, runner up, runner up, round of four. Code S, down to code A. That's okay though, because we get to cast him. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, code we'll A starting him. next week, don't miss that. Uh, and Marine King, yeah, I mean, we were talking about a little bit earlier. He's become a, uh, I think he's become a better player despite kind of falling down. Don't let, let, let that worry you. I mean, a lot of good players have fallen down to code A and then come back up again. Yeah. I mean, even Nest T was in the up and down matches once. Yeah, yeah. MVP has been in there. Yep, MC. Uh, MC. And it's because the competition's so high. You know, it's just going to happen at some point to probably nearly everyone. Well, we've changed the format as well to make it much more difficult for that to end up happening as well. So. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. The format's good. Your favorite players who are good, if they're really good, they can probably make it back. If they're not so good, then I guess we'll find out that they're not so good. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to cull the weak, Wolf. We are, man. That's right. Culling the weak at the GSL. Marine King, that's a new keyboard. Yeah. Remember uh, last week, I think it was, he uh, broke his keyboard. His old one used to be white. Yeah, the base color. Yeah. Used to. And the QSEN DT35, if you guys want to use an older keyboard with uh, it's, that's not mechanical, any non-mechanical keyboard is inferior to the QSEN DT35. We forgot to look for those yesterday. Yeah, we were we gonna did. go. We're trying to get get me a couple of yeah, those. Yeah, we need to get some more of those. Yeah. We want to have some of the Gum House. We're trying to get some of the Techno Mart and the Qualifiers. But yep. Anyway, I definitely recommend if you want to get a mechanical keyboard, the Razer Black Widow Ultimate. It's what I use. It's pretty awesome. It's a good keyboard. I used to use that one a lot too. Yeah. I'm using the Marauder right now, actually, and the keys seemed a little bit cramped at first. But I've played on it for a couple days, and I'm actually, it's really growing on me. I'm surprised. I'm not a big fan of membrane keyboards, but forget that. We're going to move into the game. Who's going to take game one? It's Slayers versus Prime here on the GSL Team League. All right, guys, here we go. In the orange, spawning at the left side, the happy, tranquil side of GSL Dual Sight from the Team Prime. He is His Majesty. Never mind, on the blue side, on the right side. Never mind, we're back to Marine King. What's Oops. going on? <laughs> They're just trying to mess with me. It's like it's Joe's first day back. We're going to make him look like an idiot. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. All right, so there's oh, Marine yeah. King. Marine King, of course, oh, at the top to left. Marine King. For some reason, the camera is set to his view only, so yeah, that's cool. It caused some problems there. I don't know. One of my favorite things to do at the at the uh, Gamma House is to watch people play. It's, yeah, yeah, watch other people's streams. And over on the right side of the map, on the Morador side, it is our blue player from the Team Slayers. Got an all kill last season. Never mind. We're back on the left side of the map again. <laughs> All right, guys, so I, I think intros are, are forbidden right for this game. So <laughs> bottom right, we've got Taja. Top left, we've got well, Marine King. So far this game, we've established that there are two sides to dual side. Yes. A right side and a left side, a dark side, a light side. Which side will be the better side? Which side do you prefer to spawn on? Well, I've actually given this a lot of thought, and I think that the left side, the less dark side, is the better side. I really, really, I, I like I the do. grass. You know, if you're on the right side, everything is always just dirty. You know, are you? how are you going to live over there? You yeah. can't plant any crops. That's right. Everything they plant dies. You can maybe eat like, see those bushes on the right side, they don't, it doesn't look very edible. No, absolutely not. So, 
pretty normal openings from both players right now. It looks like Marine King's probably going to go for a Gasless Expand. Uh, Tage is doing something a little bit more normal. Although, Gasless Expand is just as normal as anything else these days. Uh, did Actually, did Tage go Gas first? I didn't see it because you were kind of switching around there. No, no, no. He did not go Gas okay. first. So, standard 12 racks, 13 Gas. But Marine King is going for a One Barracks Expand. Yes. Yes. And it seems like a lot of the TVTs we've seen lately have been Gas first versus One Racks Expand. I don't know why that is, but just seems like it has been having some mouse issues over yeah, there. Yeah, I can't like scroll around the map. I can only click using the mini-map. You can use arrow keys. Yeah, I guess I can Old do school. That. Yeah. yeah. Old school, man. All right. So, uh, quick factory for Teja. Uh, could be going to a lot of things. A second gas right away, that kind of suggests either Banshees or Blue Flame Hellions. There's the command center for Marine King, of course. And uh, this kind of goes along with what we were talking about with Marine King, is that he's become a, a much more, I would say, I, I'm going to say a stable player. You know, he's not relying on a lot of crazy marine micro anymore. He's uh, playing a lot more like other Terran players, but when you add that really, really good micro to really good basics and mechanics, you know, you make a really good player, or at least a player that can get to second place in a lot of tournaments. Very true. Yeah. Marine King actually adding two additional barracks here, so again, going yep. for that very heavy marine style. He has taken a gas, so I'm expecting we're going to see a factory from him as soon as he gets that 100 gas that he needs. Yeah, and only getting one gas, a lot of Terran players do like to get two gas after that command center. Yeah, it's so. very, very common yeah. to see the two gas immediately, so you get that factory ASAP. So. Now what this means is that his opponent is going to be able to put pressure on very early, but it looks like we're going to see Blue Flame immediately here from Teja. He didn't awesome. even start a starport yet, starting Blue Flame very quickly. Oh, this is the uh, this is a new Slayer style. Um, getting the reactor on the barracks, getting Blue Flame right away, and then doing a push with that. Probably going to see a... If, it, if it's similar to what we've been seeing them do against Zergs lately, it's probably going to get a starport pretty soon. Yep, and there, there it, it is. is. Yeah. So, so uh, well, why don't you explain the strategy a little bit? Well, this is something that I saw for the first time at MLG Anaheim just last weekend, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, basically, you get Blue Flame really fast, get a little bit of map control with those Hellions, and then you uh, drop the Marines on the high ground as you pressure from Hellions from the low ground, and then you just lift the Hellions up too. Yeah. And we saw Boxer beat Idra with this. We saw MMA use this really well, uh, and apparently they're trying it out in TVT. Um, I forget who it was. I was talking to someone from Slayers before the match. I think it was, yeah, it was MMA. I was talking to MMA before the match, and he was saying that that was the new Slayers style for Terrans. And that's awesome. We, we've seen a lot of Terran innovation come out of Slayers, and looks like that's continuing. I love it. Well, against the style of Marine King, this can be really good. Yeah. Of course, Marine King is making a bunker. That is natural, so he's going to use that to defend against this type of Hellion aggression. It's very difficult to maneuver Hellions around well-placed bunkers. You can't really target down Marines inside. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Command Center going down for Teja. His first few Hellions are getting over here. Their Blue Flame research has finished. He tried to stop nope. that bunker from finishing, but he couldn't quite do it. But there's not going to be any mining going on right now while these Hellions are abound. Yeah, they can still get to the mineral lines, so Marine King's going to have to find a way to deal with those Hellions before he can get any sort of mining from that base. And uh, Tage, in the meantime, I mean, he's got the map control. He can basically just put that command center up at his natural. He doesn't even need to float it out there. And uh, getting a Raven right away, too. I think we were seeing some Terran players get that fast Raven, too, which I do like. Yeah, we've seen, we even saw it yesterday, people yeah. using those Ravens in those first battles. The auto turret makes such a big difference. Plus, it's good to have for protection. All around, good unit to invest in, as long as you don't lose it. Now, where... Marine King took so long to get a second gas, it kind of made me wonder if we were going to see sort of a renaissance build for Marine King. Second Raven Ooh. coming out. Nice. For Teja, he really wants to get two early Ravens. Ravens are my favorite unit in the game for the sole fact that they have the ability to cast a Seeker Missile. <laughs> and they never will in the GSL, probably, but I still like I'm it. I'm actually trying to think if that's ever... Has that ever happened before in no. the GSL? No. No one has... I can say with certainty that no one has ever used Seeker Missile in the GSL. I didn't think so. I'll talk to MMA after the game today. I'll be like, MMA, I'd really appreciate it if you used Seeker <laughs> Missile in your next match. Well, here come the Hellions. <laughs> They're going to try to do some harassment here. Yeah. The Marines Whoa. are going to catch them, but... Nice slow with the Marauders. Yep. Yeah, that's actually perfect. Yeah, uh, Marine King has this nice little timing now where he can do a counterattack with a ton of Marines. Even having those, just those three Marauders is going to be so important. Point defense the Hellions drone tight. is going to be so good against those Marauders, though. That'll actually let the Hellions do their work if he's going to have enough energy to do it. But that's a big question. Is the energy going to be high enough well, right now? he doesn't now? have it yet. Yeah. I don't he know if He just got one PDD right oh, now. Oh, no. Ooh. And the bunker may finish here. It looks like it's getting very close. 
Yep. Marine King has a really strong army right now, putting down some auto turrets. So there will be no points defense drones. Great spread by Marine King. And I think Tage is in a lot of trouble right now, Wolf. Yeah, he's desperately repairing that bunker that has only one Marine inside. Yeah. And the Hellions trying to do their work. It looks like Marine King is going to back off for now. I think he's not really sure how many units are in the bunker, but a lot of his units are on very low hit points. Yeah. He's very nervous about the Hellions. I think he also expects that there will be Banshees coming out. Well, Tage did a good job there, not just sacrificing all the Hellions. You know, not saying, I just need to defend this no matter what. Sending all his Hellions to die. So he did add, actually end up with a more than I expected he would have for that, so that's good. Siege mode going up right now for Teja. And a Marine King continuing to get bio upgrades, producing a lot of Marines and Marauders. And I believe that's, is that his first factory going down right now, or is that his second one? For, it is, uh, uh, his first one, I think. Yeah, his first factory. Yeah. Banshee on the way, can it do any yeah, damage? Yeah, Banshee may do some damage. Marine There's King. no missile turret. There is an engineering bay, yeah. but no turret down yet. Oh. And there's only Marauders here to defend, but that's not going to quite work out. Targeting down SCVs. Yeah. Marine King might just try to go for a counterattack. Looks like and, he's going uh, to. Yeah, Siege Mode I don't think is finished quite yet for Tasia. almost done, but it's not going to be done. It's finishing right now. Yep. He's Ravens. not seizing up the tanks for fear that that lost DPS will not be enough. And Marine oh, King losing all that. of his army. Tasia just had a little bit too much there. Banshee's been driven off for now, it looks like. But, uh, yeah. This is kind of the reason, too, why Marine King kind of took a step back and said, all right, I need to kind of revise my, my bio-only strategy. Just because, especially in, like, TVT, if your opponent does get a good foothold, gets the tanks out, gets siege mode, it becomes very, very difficult to do any real damage with it. Well, what's going to happen now is that Tage has got this very mech-heavy army. It's a better composition than Marine King. He's moving out in the middle of the map with these Hellions, controlling the watchtowers. He's going to siege up here these depots and actually most likely use the depots against his opponent. That's what I would do in this yeah. situation. Now, so the, Mar the Marines and Marauders are going to have to run all the way around the depots while the tanks are sieged up. I like that Marine King's getting a, a hidden base at the gold right now. I think I think he knows he's a little bit behind, needs to do something to catch up, and if he's going to go, if he's going to dedicate himself to bio, getting a gold base, just producing a ton more bio than your opponent can handle is obviously a great idea. These Hellions running forward here. Oh, the look out, sheep. Yep, making it difficult for them to get through. <laughs> One Marauder trying to slow them all down. Sorry, buddy, that's not going to work. It's left hanging. They hate that. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> so, Tage actually has six siege tanks out right now. That's a pretty scary number given that Marine King has only bio units. Yeah. He's making, you know, his, his first siege tank is actually in production right now. He's got a second factory going to come out, so he's going to try to switch over into a bio-mech mixed type of army, which is okay. You yeah. can't do just bio, you can't do... If you can do just mech, only if you're a Slayer's player and you know how to do the new style. Yeah, but, uh, they, they invent all the new Terran styles right now. It's, it's true. It, it's, it's impossible to fight against pure mech when the mech army gets large with only bio. You have to have a mix, yeah. and later you're going to want to have that mech army too because it's just better. Yeah. It's just a better army. Now, Teja moving out right now, and... Uh, Something's happening here. Oh, uh, Teja found the gold base down at the bottom. Dropped, killed a lot of the SCVs there. One mule survived to uh, tell the story. Dropships being caught in the middle of the map, but there is yeah. not enough anti-air to take those out. And I think Teja is actually going to catch Marine King in the middle of his switch over to getting a lot of mechs. So he's going to catch him with a lot less units than he would normally have. Exactly, and yep. in fact, he's catching his army in two groups right now. Yep. Attack here, the tanks are sieged up. The point defense drones blocked most of the Marauder shots. Yep. The siege tanks being attacked from two sides, but it looks like it may be too many units. Marine King losing too much here. Vikings landing, going to polish this off. Yep. And now, Teja, 30 supply ahead. Yeah, may, Teja. They end up pushing through here to finish the game. I think Teja may have spotted those factories. He knew it was a great time to move out. Not even worrying about a third base. Here he goes. Does Marine King have enough to hold this? Well, with these SCVs, he just very I, well might. Yeah, he might. But it, he's going to lose so many SCVs in the process. Mule's being dropped here. Yep. Tage is telling him to get out of the game. The Vikings actually cleaning up the SCVs so quickly. The Landed Vikings. Drone. Talking about this yesterday. It's a new TVT style. Landed Vikings. You guys got to watch the games from yesterday. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah. And but, uh, this depot's going down <laughs> very rapidly. More SCVs coming. Marauder shots yep. being absorbed. The Vikings landing here. The Hellions are going to clean up those SCVs faster than anything else could. Yeah, although he does surround the Hellions, Teja not really worrying about the battle right now. Kind of just letting his opponent deal with the units without really controlling it too much. But all the SCVs do die. And yeah, yeah I mean, the goal Tage's, base is cleaned up. 
Contagious got twice the supply of his opponent. Yep. He's actually sent Hellions over there to clean up the gold, like you said. That's and Marine King looks like he is going to be out here. Expecting GG any second now, so I was kind of hoping we'd see Marine King try for the next style too, but it looks like not today. Not today, man. Looks like these tanks may get cleaned up. He's holding on. He's clinging to dear life, but it's, what is it, like 80? Is it, Am I reading that right? My screen's going to blur 84 <coughs> it's, to... It's 52 to 105. 52 to, yeah. And basically... What's been happening is Tejas has been rallying all of his units across the map. If he just waits a second, gets a strong, cohesive force, and then moves yep. out again, he'll kill his opponent. He's already got that third base up. What's like, the worker count right now? Yeah, 32 to, to 64. Yeah. That's literally twice. It's like 32 bit versus 64 SCVs, 64. I was going to say. Star Fox 64 SCVs? That's <laughs> right. Tejas got better graphics. Anti-aliasing. Yeah, man. Anti-aliasing. Green King's know. got like the FX chip. He's trying to make That's his Star Fox look good, but it's not That's as right. good. Tay just bringing the rumble pack. Well, <laughs> he's bringing the rumble pack. That's right. He's going to install the expansion pack, which doesn't actually affect Star Fox 64, but he Not thinks at it all. does. No, I, I remember putting in the expansion pack. I was like, this is going to make the game look awesome, and then it didn't change anything. Oh, this tank's getting caught, but yeah. Green King just not having enough units. Purely Hellions and Vikings yep. cleaning it up. Yeah, I mean, Green King's Hellions just Hellions in the to natural as well, killing all of the uh. SCVs. And you know what Marine King is trying to do right now? He's basically just trying to tire Teja out. This yeah. is a team league, so Marine King knows that he's probably lost right now. It would take a miracle for him to come back. But the longer he makes Teja play, the more he's going to wear him out. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And Teja did take a third base, so it's not like he's going to mine out his two bases and then be like, oh, I guess I forgot to make more bases. <laughs> that doesn't happen too often in the GSL. Trying to do this. <laughs> use those Hellions again. Nope. Dropping them into uh, death, they're burning down trees. Oh, oh. back! Getting out of there, man. Ground. Yeah, the, yeah, just barely onto that high ground area. Hellion's like, left. Hellion's like, drop me off here. I'm just gonna drive to Lost Temple. Oh, look at this in the middle of the map. Teja ah. making four command snares. I think we're gonna see some BM. Yep. Maybe some defensive planetaries. Why I think, not? I think it's gonna be he's gonna either do uh, yeah. a bunch of manor mules, which is kind of funny, or he's gonna <laughs> do the what people like to call the manor scan, where you <laughs> just scan so many times that the screen goes white in that yep. area. I've seen Boxer do that a couple times. Yeah. yeah. And Marine King's gonna try to take a third. Uh, I mean, Tage is just like, all right, you're gonna play around with me, fine. I'm gonna play around with you. I'd love to see him go mass ravens with seeker missile. <laughs> Should have told him before the game, man. Just I message him right it. now. Yeah. Get Seeker Missile, please. Nah, man. All players are set to busy when they play in the GSL. I know. They can't cheat. I know. I <laughs> know. It's like, no, it's okay. I'm one of the casters. We just want entertaining games. This is actually the main command center for Marine King that's being taken out here by Vikings. Yeah. He lifted it to try to take another base. And so now he's down to one command center. Trying to sneak around the outside with this group of uh, Marauders and tanks. A couple Marines thrown in. A dash of Marines for flavor, but still going to be a bitter taste once Marine King has to type the GG. Yeah, when you're fighting purely Mirage against Hellions, it's good for the Mirage, but not when there's siege tanks and Vikings backing them up. Yeah. And Marine King is going to lose his entire army here yet again, but he is killing some SCVs. He's killing a lot. And here come and the mules. <laughs> tanks coming in from behind. Vikings cleaning up the dropships, which are trying to save that one Marauder. Yeah. That's, uh, that's like the President Marauder. He has a whole escort of medevacs. He drops the Marauder on top of Hellions, <laughs> though. Never mind. I guess it's not the President Marauder. Nah, I don't think so, man. Yeah. Uh, Unless he was impeached. <laughs> Marauder Gate. <laughs> it's a big scandal. <laughs> Marauder Gate. That's, that's pretty funny. Right. <laughs> he used public funds to get the slow upgrade. How dare he? Well, he actually just lied to get into the medevac. <laughs> it's, it's like, like I'm a lot lighter. He's like that character on the Titanic that says he's got a child. And you're watching Titanic, he like <laughs> picks up that girl that's crying, and you think he's doing a good thing, but then you're like, oh wait, no, he's just trying to get on the boat. He's trying to escape from Titanic. I can see the campaign posters right now. Marine Marauder 2012, he won't leave you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, man, he's, he's like, died. don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Please pick me he's up, man. <laughs> that's right. Well, so. Ring King's gonna find a bunch of orbitals over here on the right side of the map. They're uh -oh. relatively undefended. Tage's macro slipping in a big way. He forgot to turn that command center into anything. Yeah, this command center actually. I'm is so gonna disappointed. Maybe get taken out here. Yep. Not nice. that it really matters, but nice medevac micro right there. These hellions coming to clean up. Um. So, 
Yeah, this is just like watching um, an after party, I guess. <laughs> it's, I don't it's know. Pretty it's pretty much like, is. It's the Marauders are just having fun killing Hellions, yeah. but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. We're, we're kind of hanging out. We're like, remember when the game was actually happening? Yeah. I, no, those were good times. That was kind of fun, yeah. yeah. And yep. uh, SCV's chilling out. And Manor Mules, it looks like they're trying to... What are they doing? Well, they're basically, Tejab just built a command center there. And <laughs> yeah. King was trying to kill it with his SCVs. He did actually kill it. Tejab didn't cancel. <laughs> Huge blunder by yeah, Slayer's like, Tejia. This is really silly. We're just watching this Green is, King's SCVs fight actually, Hellions. There we GG. go. Wow. And that was officially the silliest game I've ever casted in the GSL. That may have been the silliest game that, that anyone was, watching the GSL has ever watched in their entire life. That was great, man. That was a fun game to start back with. Slayer's Tejia's like, did you see that? He just didn't leave. <laughs> All right. So Tejia takes game one. Pepsi guy in the background on that sign. Very pleased. <laughs> Looks pleased. He's like not even looking so. at Tejia, but he's pleased because he has Pepsi next. <laughs> no, he's like, yeah! That's exactly what I look like when someone hands me a bottle of Pepsi next. That's what I look like too, man. And I Marine King. Actually, well, I was just going to say, I looked around the studio today trying to find one. There weren't any. But Marine King, yeah, yeah looking very disappointed. Well, here's the thing, is that we talked a little bit earlier about Marine King trying to uh, kind of trying to tire out Tejia, but it went on so long that really it just ended up putting the Slayer's Clan in a really good mood, I think. You know, I mean, I think that did more for the morale of Teja and the uh, Slayers clan than it really did for Prime. So that may end up actually kind of backfiring. Um, yeah. yeah. Well. Too far. Maybe too far, yeah. You went too far. Yeah. Well, the, the way that game played out was that Marine King realized what was going on. You're going pure mech. Mm -hmm. And there was this timing where Marine King could have hit if he hit just a little earlier or if he hit a little bit later with a few more units. Mm -hmm. With that timing attack, he could have won the game, but Teja just had barely enough. I liked his choice of using the auto turrets instead of the point defense drones, given that there were only it, three Marauders. It really saved a lot of units there. He saved a lot of Hellions in that attack by doing that. Yeah. And there was only one Marine in the bunker, and Marine King didn't know that, so it was like... If he had known that, maybe targeted down the bunker, mm -hmm. or just ignored it and targeted down everything else, like the SCVs around the bunker, and just there were like two Hellions left. Yeah. If he had just barely pushed through and the reinforcements would have come, he could have actually won the game with that attack. But from there, Teja had a mech army, and the mech army grew. And when the mech army grows, when you get to like six to eight siege tanks, that's that's the timing yeah. where it's like, well, bio units just can't close the distance fast enough anymore. Well, who is the last Terran we've seen beat mech with? Bio like I don't that. know, like man. That's Masmerata. a good question. I think it was. I think Twitter's going to tell us, but I think it was probably Polt. I feel like it was. Well, Polt has shown yeah. some really awesome Marauder control. He's yeah. He just makes a ton of Marauders and just is very very positional well, with he, him. He, does he knows how to maneuver. He does. Yeah. He has like extra orbitals and he scans. And when I say extra orbitals, I mean he doesn't make planetaries, which is something that players yeah. shouldn't do in TVT. I don't know why people are still making planetaries, but that's a good know. question. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to take a coach interview here really quick. 지금 저희가 아직 승의 하나도 없잖아요. 그래서 약간 외줄 타기를 하는 기분이에요. 오늘 경기가 특히 이기느냐 지느냐에 따라서 이제 플레이오프에 갈수 있는 그런 희망이 있느냐 없느냐인데 그 외줄 타기를 얼마나 잘 하고 그 다음에 얼마나 중심을 잃지 않고 가느냐가 이번에 관건인 것 같고 최근에 또팀 성적이 팀 분위기도 다시 올라온 것 같아서 한번 다들 노력해서 열심히 끝까지 한번. 가봤으면 좋겠습니다. 어, 그 MLG에 다녀왔던 모든 멤버들, 그러니까 이완이 형이나 문성원 선수나 김동준 선수나 양준희 선수 모두 실력적으로 향상이 돼서 돌아왔는데 이제 체력적인 면에서 약간 시차 적응이 아직 왜냐면 스케줄이 빡빡하게 있어서 그런 부분 빼고는 모두 다 좋은 컨디션 실력적으로는 유지하고 있어서 이번 경기에도 큰 도움이 됐을 거라고 믿고 있습니다. 이번에 이번 경기가 양쪽 모두 팀한테 정말 중요한 경기가 되겠는데 저희 팀도 이번에는 만큼은 정말 양보할 수 없고 최선을 다하는 모습 그리고 꼭큰 점수 차로 이길 수 있도록 한번 준비했으니까 재밌는 경기 해봤으면 좋겠습니다. <목소리> 어 저희가 아직까지 팀 리그에서 어, 아직까지도 1승을 거두지 못하고 있는데요. 어 저번에 OGS전에서 저희가 좀 그래도 유리하게 스코어를 이끌고 갔었는데 또 아쉽게 패배를 하는 바람에 거기다가 이번에 오늘은 플레이어스 팀도 마찬가지지만 저희도 오늘 경기에서 패배하면 은 플레이어프에 진출할 수가 없게 돼요 그렇기 때문에 
저희가 정말 열심히 준비를 했고 이번에 오늘 꼭 이겨서 플레이오프에 진출할 수 있는 발판을 마련하도록 하겠습니다. 저희가 이번에 어, 슬레어스전에 맞은 선봉전이 그 이정훈 선수 대 윤영석 선수인데 슬레어스 팀이 그러니까 테란이 매우 강력한 팀이라고 생각을 해요. 거의 주축 멤버들이 테란이라고 생각하고 저희와의 오늘 경기도 예상을 해보면 은 거의 다 테란이 나오지 않을까 생각을 하는데 저희 선봉 이정훈 선수가 윤영석 선수를 음, 이, 이, 이겨준다면 은 저희가 준비한 카드들이 많이 있기 때문에 오늘 승리할 수 있을 거라고 예상을 합니다. 어, 지금 슬레어스 팀과 저희 팀 모두 이제 서로 물러설 수 없는 위치에 있다고 생각을 해요. 저희도 정말 준비를 많이 했고 오늘은 양보할 수 없기 때문에 최선을 다해서 슬레어스 야이크를 꼭 물질르도록 하겠습니다. Well, you guys heard it right from the coach's mouth, man. Yeah. Both of these teams got to win today. They do. They have to win or they're not going to get to the playoffs. I just think it's a little bit awkward where they do the coach interviews after the game and they say something like, we hope our first person wins this first game because then we'll be in a great spot. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, about that. Gets a little bit tough. <laughs> yeah. So, Boxer well, turtling in his jacket a little bit there. <laughs> oh, the turtling He the siege tank on the photo. Yep. And, oh. you know, Sela talked about the Slayers players coming back from MLG being uh, kind of tired. And, you know, we saw a lot of them at the qualifiers for the last two days. And yesterday, Boxer qualified, but he did look really tired at the end of the day. Yes, he yeah. did. Um, I was tired at the end of the day, too, man. Just I was tired, too. The, the qualifier is such an intense atmosphere. We try to make it yeah. seem not like that when we were yeah. casting, but it's, it's really tense. So I got to say, though, these last couple of days, maybe it's just because we were casting and things like that, but the, the qualifiers seemed more fun than the last yeah. time I was there. But I think the last time I was there, I was just kind of taking pictures and walking around and, and videoing people a little bit. So I, you know, we didn't really, I didn't really interact as much. Yeah. So, All know. right, let's find out who Prime's going to pick. Is it going to be Hongen? Looks like it is, Hongen unless Prime. he's messing with us. He's not messing with us, it's going to be Hongen. Yep. Hongen Prime. The Blink Stalker King. The Blink Stalker King. Uh, yep. He's so good with his Blink Stalkers. His micro is incredible. He made it all the way to the round of four in Code S. Using incredible yep. timing attacks. His macro is not bad, but he just no. doesn't want to show you guys. He's like, I don't I don't <laughs> feel like showing you guys. I don't need to. I'm just going to kill you with the timing it's attack. So good. It would be dangerous for us to see it, Wolf. So uh, there's his results so far. Round of eight, round of four. 18-14. He's got a winning record in the GSL, so... It's not bad. Anyone who's got a winning record in the GSL is obviously pretty good. I think he also made it to the round of four in the open season number three. That was the season, yeah. I think, where he beat Fruit Dealer after doing this crazy wall-off where was, he kept, like, Fruit Dealer kept killing his buildings, but he made a maze of the wall-off. Was that that game? I, now that you say that, I remember that game, but I couldn't remember that who That happened, and that then he, I think he beat Fruit Dealer with DTs on Blistering Sands for game uh, three, and that oh. Fruit Dealer was like, oh. <laughs> I remember he had a bunch of Zerglings on the ramp, and, like, one DT killed every Zergling. Good old blistering sand. I missed that map. I actually thought that really? map wasn't a terrible map. It's very that difficult was, for Terran, but no, it, it was no steps of war. But it was. I never liked that map. I don't know. Maybe I just had too many, uh, too many rocks getting broken down, backdoor attacks. It's definitely a map that I think is not a good map overall, but I liked it personally. It was a fun map for me to play on, based on my style. Well, I, I wish like we would it. see the tile set come back. Yeah, I would map. too. I want to see some yeah. snow tile set. I know you're There's listening, Dustin. <laughs> I want to get some snow tile set in here. <laughs> well, we're going to have to deal with the grass tile set for Taldrim Altar. Yes. And uh, that's a good map for a TVP. That's yeah, actually Hong one of my favorite chosen this map, maps. so he's probably got a specific build order plan. Yep. I'll have to find out just which one. Yeah. The countdown has started. Are you ready, Doa? I am ready, man. I've, I've been ready since I left Korea to come back and do this again. All right, well, you're finally here. I'm glad finally to be here. here with you. Me too. You know, we were here. We'll probably wait until the game starts. All right, well, yeah. Doe's got a story for you guys. A little bit of a story. It's not that exciting, but I guess the intro's it's taking gonna longer. It's going to get more exciting. I, just I could have told it by now, actually. <laughs> it's going to get more exciting because we're hyping it up. We're going to zoom all the way into their nostrils. Never mind. We're going into the game. It's, it's going to be Hongen versus Teja. Can Hongen tie it up or will Teja put Slayer's 